What is up guys, Taiki here, and uh, today I just wanted to give my thoughts on the entire situation that's unraveling. Um, I'm still shell-shocked by all the events. Um, it doesn't make sense to me um, why SBF and Alameda would do things like this, but you know, it doesn't really matter you know, what we think. It, like, what matters is that it's happened, um, and like, where do we go moving forward? Um, you know, it's, yeah, so before I get into my thoughts, um, let's just briefly go over what happened. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because everyone is talking about this, so I'm assuming that you kind of get the general gist of what's going on. Uh, but, you know, Sam, like SBF, um, you know, created uh, Alameda um, to do the whole Japanese Bitcoin arbi uh, arbitrage uh, where they can just buy Bitcoin uh, at X dollars on a US exchange and then sell it on uh, some Japanese exchange at a premium, and then, you know, you, you can kind of arb that. Um, and then you know they started to t make more directional bets uh, by I guess logging risk assets, and they've made other uh, big bets in uh, Solana and whatnot. Uh, and they created FTX, right? Uh, this crypto exchange, and you know FTX has gained the trust of a lot of users, um, but I guess not so much anymore. It's kind of ironic because you know everything that's he said in the past just it just like doesn't make any sense, right? Um, people have been calling him like Sam Bankman fraud, um, but I guess, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of real at this point, right? Um, and I guess, you know, with FTT, right, which is the entire, uh, the, the core of this entire collapse, um, you know, FTT was, you know, something, uh, or the FTX token, um, and it gave people 33% um, of the fees generated on FTX markets, and, you know, they were, uh, you know, buying it back. Uh, you know the company itself and every week um, SBF was tweeting things like this where you know it's that time of the week not financial advice and we're gonna tee up this much FTT um, with like four million dollars um, but you know I, I guess we know what his uh, incentives were um, the problem that um, I guess Alameda had was uh, the majority of their treasury was denominated in FTT and of course if the majority of the supply is held by one one entity there's no way for them to you know be able to offload that because there's not going to be enough buyers, right? Um, I guess that, that that's kind of the problem with a circulating market cap of FDV um, in the current price um, because you know that market cap isn't really real because if one big player wants to sell, then you know that market cap kind of vanishes. Um, but the problem was as, uh, Alameda used FTT as collateral to borrow against, and they, I guess they were using the money that they used as collateral to like I don't know, lead seed rounds into like Sui and then Aptos. Um, use that money to bail out Voyager, right? Make it seem like he's a good guy. I heard that, you know, the money that he was supposed to give Voyager hasn't even uh, came in yet, right? So, like, you know, like, where is all this money? And it seems like he didn't really have this money. And maybe he was backed into this corner and he was forced to, I guess, use customer funds to uh, backstop some of this. Um, and, you know, when, when the whole FUD happened with CZ, um, saying that, you know, he wanted to uh, you know, sell some FTT, um, it kind of caused this big run where, uh, you know, the entire system collapsed. Um, a lot of people blame CZ for this. Um, I don't really blame him. Um, like, to be honest, like, I, I don't like the fact that CZ and Binance has all this power. Um, but, you know, like, I personally like CZ more than SBF. Um, you know, because, like, like the, the whole effective altruism thing never made sense to me because I, I feel like, you know, you're, if you're in crypto and DeFi, um, I feel like everyone's coming to age moment is when you buy a token and you just get dumped on by um, Alameda, right? That's your coming to age, right? So effective altruism like makes everything sound rosy, uh, but when uh, you find out that you know you're the counterparty to uh, the effective altruism, um, it's like you know like like what the hell is this? And then you know you you hear all this and it just like doesn't make any sense. Um, but it, it's my opinion that like, I don't even think. Binance like sold that much FTT, right? Um, they mentioned that you know they're gonna liquidate um, all the FTT over time to minimize price impact. Obviously, the price impact was maximized, um, but you know I feel like even if like Binance sold like like I don't know like ten percent of what they had over the past couple of weeks, um, it technically shouldn't affect price that much. Even though it should, right? I mean, I mean it will affect price, of course. Um, but you know I think the whole uh, cascading price in FTT just 
was similar to like the whole Luna event where people just like wanted to get out. Um, I read the note for Multicoin. Um, you know, they lost 10% of their assets under management because it was an FTX. And even like they said that, hey, like when we heard about the news, we just sold all the FTAT that we had in our books, um, you know, just so we can get out as fast as possible. And I'm sure that was the case for other larger entities that held FTT. Um, and, you know, I feel like people always want a hero. People want someone to look up to and like, you know, say, hey, like, I love this guy. I'm going to look up to him. I'm going to copy trade him. And similarly, on the other side, people want to have a villain where it's like, it's, it's all this guy's fault. Um, you know, like it's, th it's this person's fault that, you know, everything is collapsing. And, you know, to me, I mean, CZ, maybe he could have handled it better. Um, but I mean, not, like none of this would have happened if, you know, like Alameda didn't take on this much risk and, you know, do illegal things. Um, it's so weird, right? Because, you know, even like, SBF was thought to be like this golden boy amongst these politicians. Like he was like, uh, proposing like random def like anti defi bills, like, taking pictures with politicians, but he was like doing this when he knew that his entire thing was um, a fraud, uh, which doesn't make any sense. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is, and um, it's really really sad seeing everyone on the timeline um, on Twitter um, talking about um, the money that they lost. Um, you know, because they trusted um, FTX, they trusted SBF, so you know. They kept some money on FTX, and now, like, who knows what's gonna happen? I really hope that um, someone does bail these customer funds at some point. Um, Binance recently said that they're not gonna uh, do it, um, but um, I heard that you know other you know VCs that you know previously invested um, into FTX, they're looking for ways to I guess um, buy FTX equity or something. Um, but who knows, right? Like, I mean, you know, the, the the problem here is that like no one um, in the public knows how big the hole is i heard somewhere like in the vicinity is that three to six billion but uh you know like who's gonna cover that up right you know like like why would anyone cover that up um like well like you let, let's say they have like four billion dollar hole right like like someone brings four billion dollars makes use of this hole but like what's the point of like having like ftx be alive um maybe you know some large like legacy company can rebrand it um but you know at that point like i, I don't think it really makes any sense um, but I hope for the sake of the industry, um, you know, something good happens. Even if only like, you know, 33% of the funds gets recouped um, and, you know, all the small accounts, right, maybe gets reimbursed first and the larger players, um, you know, they get reimbursed last. Like maybe that's a better way to put it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just bad times for um, everyone. Right? And thus this thumbnail. Um, yeah, and, you know, I guess when I was telling my um, girlfriend's uh, this event last night, uh, she asked me this question, you know, like, I get that you like crypto and whatnot, right? Uh, but like, what would make you leave? Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's a pretty good question because I never really considered leaving crypto. Um, but I feel like, you know, it's not great to just, just assume, like, you know, that not, not just like be all in this industry and whatnot, um, and just assume that things can happen because the, the future is uncertain. Um, but, you know, my question, or sorry, my answer to her was, I'm probably gonna leave um, this space if it weren't for Ethereum and uh, and for all the decentralized applications built on top of it. Uh, and, and I'm talking like Uniswap, um, Aave, Compound Maker, Curve, um, things like that, right? Um, because I guess for my, like my story, um, some of you may know this, but um, I, I, I guess I got into crypto because numbers were going up um, in 2020. Um, I bought a bunch of DeFi tokens without really understanding what they were doing. Um, and, you know, it, it went up and, you know, naturally that kind of piqued my interest. Um, I, you know, in early 2021, I bought a bunch of governance tokens, got wrecked, probably dumped by Alameda, to be honest. Um, and, um, you know, I was just kind of learning. And then um, I really fell in love, right, truly fell in love with, um, I guess, DeFi uh, in April slash May of 2021, uh, when I bridged to Polygon and used Aave for the first time with very low fees. Uh, because that was the first time basically where I, you know, withdrew BTC either from centralized um, custodians, you know, self-custody, like learned how to self-custody and then, you know, use that as collateral to borrow against. And it, it was pretty addicting to see, you know, my Bitcoin balance go up every second, right, because it was accruing interest and the ability to, I guess, borrow money like USDC, you know, without having to ask anyone. Um, it's not capital efficient, right? Um, but, you know, at the time there were polygon incentives, so I... I was being paid to borrow, and then I could park that money into Curve, right? So I, I, 
I would be paid 2% to borrow USDC and then I would pay like 20% to deposit USDC on credit, right? I feel like that was just, you know, that, I mean, that, that was like a basic strategy, a simple strategy, but it really opened my mind on what could happen, right? Uh, with everything that's going on. Um, and, you know, if you think about it, like DeFi itself, like nothing like went down, right? Um, this was the case for Celsius and like everything else too. Um, but, you know, the tech itself like works, right? I mean, even GMX um, put in a billion dollars worth of volume uh, yesterday, right? And it really makes you appreciate, um, you know, with all this FTX thing, um, the design of, I guess, these decentralized uh, perpetual exchanges, where with GMX, right, everything is on chain, right? Traders can pull out anytime. You always have custody of your assets. The TVL is super transparent. You never have to worry about an exchange not being able to pay you out and the market makers are the community, right? Like you don't have to rely on Alameda trading against um, traders, you know, other market makers, um, I don't know, like with their algorithms, like, you know, taking funds from people, right? It's just, you know, like I, I buy GLP and you can use that GLP to, you know, trade, right? I mean, it's a super simple, um, but understandable uh, system and it works, right? I mean, a billion dollars of the volume. And even though right now, um, sentiment around, I guess, crypto and whatnot is like in the gutters, um, I do think that fundamentally it's going to bring more uh, TBL into DeFi uh, in the future. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, to be honest, right? Um, because right now um, trust is vanished. Um, but, you know, af after all this, I think people are just going to demand uh, more transparency, uh, proof of reserves and whatnot. Um, you know, with Coinbase is a public company, you can, you know, see how much money they have. Uh, Kraken, right, does proof of reserves, and Binance also said they're going to start to do it. So I think, you know, net-net, um, it's going to benefit the ecosystem, but obviously in the short term, um, who knows what's going to happen, right? Because we have no idea. Because um, FTX was all, like, obviously affected, but, like, what about, you know, entities like Jump, um, other, like, market makers? Because they were all hit, right? It, it was impossible not to be hit. Um, and I think it's going to take some time to uh, see all, all the dead bodies rise, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but I guess back to the original topic, right? Um, I guess the, um, the the irony of this entire thing was that the blockchain, DeFi, um, block, uh, everything like everything worked, right? Everything worked as they were intended to, right? Like smart con in, in smart contracts, we trust. Um, but I guess with all the collapse that's happened, it's not a problem with the tech itself. It's just that you know rich people with various different incentives, profit-driven incentives. Um, just use the tech um, and the coins associated with the tech um, in, a, in a fraudulent or evil way. And when they blow up, it just hurts everybody. Um, and we just, I mean, you know, 2022, just an awful year. Um, you know, I'll be the first one to say, like, to, to tell you that, you know, um, even though I had no funds on FTX, um, you know, all my, like, everything is down, right? So, like, all my coins are down. Um, and, you know, I, I, you know, the, the saying is like, if you're gonna panic, panic early. Uh, you know, like that's a popular saying in crypto. Uh, to be honest, like I, I didn't really, like, I, I didn't panic enough, right? I panicked a little bit, uh, you know, like sold some like for cash and whatnot, but like, you know, definitely not enough. And, you know, I'm definitely down. Um, and it's really saddening to see people that did take profits, right? Um, that kept their cash in FTX because people thought they were safe. But now it's like, who knows how, uh, how long it's gonna take for people to get their money back and if they're gonna get their money back um, And you know, it's it's just really saddening and I think right, right now what's missing in this space is Like a purpose right hope soul and purpose right as you see in the title there um, Because you no, know, I all like, you know I'm uh, I'm guilty of this too, right? But like when numbers are going up in a bull market uh, you kind of forget, you, like you know, you kind of get caught up in that, and you kind of forget um, what brought you here in the first place, and you you, you kind of get caught up in like number go up, um, and you know, like like I, I take full responsibility for that. Um, but when things are this bad, um, you like, for people to stay and for people to believe and for people to want to keep building, um, there has to be something for people to build towards, right? Because if people can't see a future for I guess blockchain technology, then they, it's just a waste of time. Um, and I think you know that's when like, I come back to this question like what would make me leave? Um, it's if like you know Ethereum becomes like super centralized um, and whatnot. And I think you know what brought me here is um, or you know what made me fall in love with DeFi was 
I guess, the decentralized applications, um, the ability to hold your own assets, not have to trust uh, intermediaries, and I guess, you know, with this technology brought to DeFi, NFTs, etc. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, there will be other use cases in the future that we aren't even considering, right? Um, you know, if, you know, these deep, like huge deep applications fail, if Ethereum becomes like super centralized over time, I feel like at that point I will lose my purpose. Um, and I feel like at that point um, it's gonna really be really difficult for me to you know stick around. Um, however, you know, like, you know, even though it's really, really bad, um, I still believe in Ethereum and Bitcoin, right? Um, and uh, to be honest, if I were to buy more things right now, right? Um, you know, buy the blood or whatever, um, I would probably just like buy Bitcoin, either GOP or try crypto, right? Um, because if you think about people's risk appetites, it's, you know, at all time lows, basically. Um, and if people are going to buy something, they're only going to buy one. They're only going to want to buy things that uh, they're comfortable, that's going to stick around. And, and I do think Bitcoin either will stick around. Um, but yeah, and for me, um, you know, um, I guess, I guess like, where I come from, um, I, I can say all these things all I want, um, but at the end of the day, right, I'm just like some dude on the internet, like making videos about like like magic internet coins, um, and you know, like you can argue that like I'm not really adding value to this space, um, aside from like you know educating and like you know hopefully, um, yeah, you know ho ho hopefully you get value out of like watching these videos uh, because you know I I, ho I hope to add value, um, but you know at, at this point like. You know, I shouldn't just like make videos. I sh I, I should contribute to uh, decentralized governance um, and you know helping protocols. Um, I guess you know get out of this right because I, I empathize with the builders. Um, you know the high integrity builders. That's you know going to unfortunately suffer from this. Um, so you know I think in in twenty twenty three I'm going to participate more in DAO governance. Um, I'm generally bearish DAOs in general, um, but you know like. I, I can say that, but like you know, I should I should like you know actually be a part of this um, this decentralized uh, economy and you know try to sh help shape um, where this industry is going to grow. Um, and I mentioned before that you know I don't like I never want to be associated with projects. Um, you know I never want like seed allocations or I don't want free tokens. I don't even want like an advisor role. Um, but seeing the pain, right? Seeing uh, the sadness uh, across the board, um, I feel like it's you know it's my duty and my purpose to also help these people. So if you're like a founder trying to create something of value, um, you know, in a, in a, de in a decentralized way, um, feel free to DM me um, on Twitter. Um, I'm more than happy to help, um, like, you know, n nothing financially. Like, I, I don't want free tokens. Um, I don't want to invest, um, but you know, like with protocol design, with tokenomics, um, I'm just like, you know, I just like want to help at this point um, because, you know, someone has to, you know, push the industry forward, right? And like, I'm not technological, like I'm, I'm not tech savvy by any means, right? Um, I'm like so, just some dude with a business degree, um, but you know, like, you know, no. like we, we should all like help <laughs> where, where, where we can, right? Uh, so uh, that's definitely where I'm at. Um, I hope everyone's okay. Um, you know, uh, everyone's feeling the pain, right? It's, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's first important to understand that um, you know, like no one is alone, right? Everyone is down bad. Everyone is surprised. Everyone is shocked, and you know, no one is happy from this. Um, but I think it's important to think about. Okay, like, um, you know, like if you think about it, like you know, like sure, like you know, techie sad, but like you know, my, my friends and family, like they're not really affected by this, right? Maybe if they own some ether, Bitcoin, right? Like, they're kind of upset, um, and they're gonna text me like, "What the hell is going on?" Uh, but you know. I personally get like sometimes too caught up in the day to day, right? Because I'm in the space every single day. I'm like researching, um, you know, trying to figure out like what's going on, like where is the space going, um, what kind of designs are interesting, right? I'm 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 like doing all of that, um, but I think it's important to um, think about what's really important. And like I, th I think that's like friends and family. Um, I want to spend more time with my dog um, and whatnot. Like today, like I haven't even eaten. I have not eaten anything, uh, but I should probably eat something. Uh, so, you know, I think, you know, these are, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't even know what, like, what the hell is going on. I, I, I mean, like, like you're, you're definitely not here to, like, uh, subscribe to, like, you know, hear, hear, hear like, techie pep talks, but, um, 
I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, I'm done bad. Everyone's done bad. It's like, what do we, what, like, what do we do at this point? Right? Like, like, you know, like, let's, like, if, if you still believe, if you still want to stick around, you know, let's try to push the industry forward. Um, you know, like, let's try to learn from our mistakes. Um, I think we are getting there. Right. I think, you know, centralized companies, they're not going to be able to, uh, win over the competition if they don't have some level of transparency. I think that's a positive. Um, and I do think that, you know, with everything that's happened, it's going to drive more and more attention and mind share towards decentralized applications. And I think that's a good thing. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, that trend stays there. Um, hopefully, um, the industry recovers, hopefully, um, FTX users get made whole. Um, it's probably going to take a long process. Um, you know, um, you know, cause I think the headlines are, um, I mean, the headlines are already bad, right? Um, and, you know, I think the subsequent news can't be worse than what it already is, but it's also kind of like the death by a thousand cuts where, you know, we can kind of, we can just kind of see like small, like bad news, bad news, bad news from like various different entities um, that, you know, can also can kind of crescendo, crescendo, cre crescendo into um, an even bigger capitulation. Um, but you know, like I'm not like 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 for me, like I'm not really selling coins at this point, right? It's like if it goes lower, it goes lower. Like, like like what's like I'm not gonna try to get into this game of like sell 17k to buy 14k or 13k. Like you know, I'm not really a trader. Um, I'm just like a DeFi fundamentalist. And you know, in these market environments, um, people like me get wrecked, right? Because we're like buy and hold, and then this happens and everything goes down, and it's like, well, like. I guess I'm. I guess I'm a bag holder, right? Um, my my investments are with uh, good technology. They will come back, right? That's uh, definitely the bag holder mentality I'm in. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm not really sure what the purpose of this video is, um, but um, you know, I guess I don't know. I I I I, I, I guess the point is like you know like what like what is like what is the soul of crypto, right? How do we recover that soul. Um, I think NFTs could be interesting, right? Um, I was listening to some NFT spaces and even though the entire space is capitulating, right? Like all the sectors are capitulating. Um, I, I do think it's interesting that um, these strong like NFT communities, they, they're probably gonna stick around, right? Even if number don't go up. Um, and hopefully, you know, uh, there can be various communities that retain that crypto culture. And obviously, right, DeFi, um, the core DeFi builders in the space, um, you know, like, this is even more incentive to uh, continue to innovate and build. Um, and though I've been armchair quarterback for, um, I guess like the past year or so, or, or over the past, um, like uh, roughly the past two years, um, I do want to um, help grow this space forward. Um, and like I mentioned, um, if you wanna talk about um, just anything, right? Uh, my DMs are open, um, not gonna invest or not gonna like, do anything like that, um, but, you know, I, I feel like that's the least I can do. Um, and hopefully um, I can look back on this video in a couple of years and say, hey, like, why was Taiki so sad, right? Like, like what a joke. Um, and I'm glad. And hopefully I can look back and say, hey, like, I'm really glad that I'm a part of these DAOs and I helped shape, you know, the like various applications in the right direction. Um, that's definitely where I want to be in, I guess, the end of 2023, right? I guess the, yeah, I guess the takeaway is like, no, like, what do you want to accomplish by the end of 2023? Um, and I guess like we should all strive towards that. Um, and for me, right, that's continuing to believe, continuing to stick to um, research um, and hopefully contribute to decentralized governance. And, uh, you know, everyone's like bearish DAOs, but maybe I can, you know, improve on that, right? Who knows? Uh, thank you guys for watching um, and uh, see you guys some other time and bye-bye.